Hey everyone, and welcome back to the Water Cooler TV show. We'd like to thank you for joining us for our first official NFL episode. And before we start, Evan has something he would like to say. Yeah, so we just wanted to give a quick shout out to one of our subscribers and a family friend of mine who is currently in the hospital due to an injury he sustained last weekend. So I and the guys at WCTV are definitely thinking of you, and we are sending our well wishes to you for a speedy recovery. So as we know, the Saints were playing the 49ers this weekend where Drew Brees got sacked by Contavious Street about halfway through the second quarter, which left him injured with a couple broken ribs and a collapsed lung. We'll start it off with Eli. Do you think that the Saints season is now over? No, I don't think that it's even close to over. So we have Jameis Winston, and we also have Taysom Hill, which I do not think Jason Wynn will control all of the snaps. I think they're going to split off because Taysom Hill happens to be, like, insane. But we'll see what happens. Like, I think the main concern is James Winston not throwing to the other team. But, I mean, if he can complete a few passes like Michael Thomas, Jared Cook, uh, you know, Adam Kamara, he's more of a receiver than a running back. But I think that they still have a long way to go. And Breeze will be back in within the next four or three weeks, they said. So I think they'll be good. Uh, Evan, what do you think? Is their season over? I mean, maybe. I don't know. It's it's tough because you're going to need certain guys to just step up. And like you said, they've got Taysom Hill, you know, the NFL's Swiss Army knife. You could play him at any position on ESPN, he's actually listed as a QB. And then you also have great arm with Jameis Winston. The concern there, like you had said, in his last year with Tampa Bay, and the reason he sort of got booted out of there were those 30 interceptions. He's a great arm, but uh, not such good eyes. Great arm. <laughs> now, yeah, the accuracy is not there. We'll see how he does now that he's stepping up to fill this role. So. Okay. I think that their season isn't over because, as you see, for the last two and a half quarters, at the time of the injury, they were down 10 to 3. And then James Winston came in and he was able to make it so that they won. They, they ended up winning 27 to 13. So if he can continue performing like that, I think that they'll be okay. Gosh, that's a very good point. I would say that they do have... A chance. It's not a slim chance, but it's not a fat chance either. They got to involve Michael Thomas. So I think if they just pass the ball more and if James Winston, like Eli said, uses his eyes and does not throw picks, I think the Saints should be doing golden. Also with the way their defense is playing, like Josh, you mentioned in, you know, in the rest of that game, they only let up three more points, um, which is great for them. So I think if they really just establish the defense and can get Winston and Hale into a groove, then I think they're definitely uh, on track for a good postseason run. Next up, we have the Pittsburgh Steelers, who just went 9-0 by being the Cincinnati Bengals, 36-10. Evan, do you think that the Pittsburgh Steelers are Super Bowl contenders, and who do you think that their biggest threat is? Yeah, they're definitely Super Bowl contenders. Best record in the NFL. And I think that because of their defense, they would make it past the Chiefs or the Ravens to win the division and then to get into the Super Bowl. Yeah, so I agree with Evan, and I think that their defense is like a huge factor to everything, but I feel like their defense has always been a huge factor. And this year, their rushing defense is insane. Like, any running back, they're, they're crap in their pants when they're up against this defense. But also their offense. They have a, a lot of great new ads, like Claypool. He's amazing. And he also had Dante Johnson. He's insane. They're both very good. Plus Juju, plus James Conner. And let's talk about freaking Big Ben. The guy's a monster. He's living up to his name, finally, Big Ben. The guy's, I would say, top five QB right now, which is crazy. And the way he's playing, they're just going to keep going. And I don't see that. I don't see that their foot is going to let off the gas pedal. How do you think? So, like you said, I would say Big Ben is probably having one of his best years. He's definitely putting his name out there. I think they have this division sealed. The Bills. The Bills have been doing great this season, and they just had a wild game with the Cardinals. Uh, Eli, what do you have to say about the game? I think it was an amazing game. And let, let me tell you, my favorite player, DeAndre Hopkins, the man's 
the, the man's a monster. The man's a beast. Even throughout the game, he was going against one of the best cornerbacks, Javius White, and he's very good. And also, they've had history before of him getting locked down, also the uh, going off against him. So we don't really know what's going to happen here. Also, we have Kyler Murray, we had Chase Edmonds, we had Drake, Christian Kirk. Listen, I think that team is stacked. And I know that they're going to get far, but are they going to go to the Super Bowl? I, it's a tough call. I want them to, and I think that they have the players to get there. But uh, let's see what happens. Also, the Bills, listen, they put up a great fight. Josh Allen did great, Stephon Diggs. And it was very funny, actually, because when uh, Josh Allen threw that touchdown to Stephon Diggs, the announcer goes, the best wide receiver in football. I was like, excuse me, literally the next play, about nine seconds left on the clock. Kyler Murray chucks it off to DeAndre Hopkins. Oh, my freaking God. And he catches it over, not one, not two, but three guys. You know why? Because the guy's a monster. He's the best receiver in the league. And that's what you get when you go up against DeAndre Hopkins. Very simple. It was an amazing catch. It was a 43-yard catch over three people. Overall, though, I think his impact is really helping the Cardinals get to where they are right now. Boys, y'all know what time it is. Top three QBs. Evan, start us off. Okay. At number three, we have Russell Wilson. At number two, at number two, we have Aaron Rodgers. And at number one, we have the ketchup loving, Super Bowl winning, mm. cannonball throwing man, <sighs> Patrick Mahomes. No doubt. I mean, he has one interception, 25 touchdowns, second best QBR in the league, fifth best in yards. I mean, you know, should I go on? Yeah, so like I said, at my number two spot, I've got Aaron Rodgers of the Packers. A pleasure, absolute pleasure to have him on my fantasy team this year. He's got the best QBR in the league, second best in touchdowns with 26. He does have three interceptions, but he's also thrown for 2,578 yards. Um, And he has done it all with no wide receivers. Let's move on to number three. Um, So I got Russell Wilson, first in the league with touchdowns. Unfortunately, he does have 10 interceptions. He drops a bit in the QBR ranking at eighth, but he is second in yardage with 2,789 yards. Josh... Please, please enlighten us. Please enlighten me with your top three. Yeah. So, first up, I have Joe Flacco. Oh. Okay, no, 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 I'm kidding, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Okay, so in my number one spot, I have Patrick Mahomes. <laughs> been having, in my opinion, MVP season with 2,700 passing yards, 25 touchdowns, and one deception. Next, I have Tom Brady, who has 2,750 passing yards and 23 touchdowns, and he has seven interceptions, which is why he isn't my first one. (laughs) Excuse me, Josh? Yeah. You were not kidding about Joe Flacco, were you? (laughs) Um, (laughs) I uh, put us... Okay, and lastly, I have Big Ben with 2,300 passing yards, only four interceptions, and 22 touchdowns. And because of him, the Steelers are nine now. Yeah, I don't, I don't know about Brady up there, man. He's been uh, pretty disappointing for me this season. I, I, think he's having, I think he's doing great, just that he's not hitting the amount that he should be. But he has, he's playing good. But he could be having – if he starts to hit those shots, like he missed Antonio Brown for like a 50 yard touchdown, he overthrew it. Like if he starts to hit those, I think he could be top. Yeah. It's hard for Antonio about to catch balls and he's in handcuffs. Um. <laughs> that, is, that is some big facts right there. <laughs> yeah. All right, let's go. All right. So I'm going to go from first to last. Right now, maybe one of the better QBs, I would go with. I would say Justin Herbert. Oh, no. Yes. You've seen they – they do not have a winning record. They do not look good. Look at his stats right now. 
I'm telling you, I believe that he is great. You can definitely build the team around him. At number two, we got Aaron Rodgers, I would say. Definitely. He's been playing great this season. I think he has, like, I think Evan said before, like, what, three or four interceptions? My last one, I would say Big Ben. He's he's doing great this season. He's living up to his name, Big Ben. The Steelers are 9-0. and That's That just shows what a good quarterback he is. So, at number one, I'm to go. I'm gonna go with Aaron Rodgers. Like most of you guys said, Aaron Rodgers is top. I think he's above Mahomes, honestly. And just the way he's been playing and the accuracy, he's from dots. And then as number two, I have Patrick Mahomes. Listen, is he having his best season? No, I think last year he's having a great season. But then again, the man's a monster. He's a big arm. The passes he's making underhand insane throws of touchdowns it's crazy and the amount of interceptions he has is insanely low so I think that's very good about Mahomes but he also has weapons he has Tyreek he has Tyreek Hill he has Travis Kelsey and he's now acquiring Le'Veon Bell but I don't know how that's really helping him but he also has Nicole Hardman Sammy Walkings who's been injured a lot but he still has a lot of weapons and then my third one is going to be Allen's first with this Justin Herbert. The man's been putting up an average of 300 passing yards a game, and he's having f- he's having four touchdowns a game, and with an, with an occasional rushing touchdown. That's insane for a rookie QB. So, oh yeah, Joe Burrow is going to be tough. All of a sudden, Justin Herbert comes out of freaking nowhere, shows up, takes charge. I mean, he's not winning games, but it's not entirely his fault. He's throwing dots. Just he can't do it alone. It's not a one man show. So I think that's why I put Justin Herbert as him. So we've got a big game on Thursday. It's the Seahawks and the Cardinals in Seattle. You can catch it on Fox at 820. Bro, that is going to be such a good game. I'm going to have to change pants every quarter. (laughs) (laughs) Guys, we have the stats. We know what's at stake. Alan, start us off. Who's winning this game? They both have their weapons. They both have great mobile quarterbacks. You know, you see them zipping and zooming. They both have that one, you know, God tier receiver. So I think it's really anyone's ball game. I agree with Alan. I think that it is anyone's ball game. And for that reason, I'm just going to go with my favorite. And I'm going to go with the Seahawks. I'm a big Russell Wilson fan. And that's just my reasoning. You are? Well, there, my friend. Well, I have something to tell you. <laughs> So, the Seahawks, right? Coming off terrible game. Now, here's the question. Are they going to bounce back together as one? Or are they just going to play separately again? And they're just going to... But DK Metcalf got locked up last time. Jalen Ramsey destroyed him. Jalen Ramsey also has to be insane. But also, is the Cardinals' defense enough to stop? Like you said, Evan, Tyler Lockett and DK Metcalf. And also, if Chris Carson comes back, it's huge. The guy's, the guy's a truck. Guys will run through any player. So we'll see what happens there. But then also you have the Cardinals defense, which is not that bad. And the last time that they went at it, we had DK running across basically the whole field to catch uh, Buda Baker. And that was insane play. It ran like 22 miles per hour. But listen, we'll see what happens. I'm, I'm going to take the Cardinals side on this because I think they're coming off a hot game and that streak will continue. I I agree with Eli. You know, um, the 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 Seahawks have had two disappointing losses uh, against Buffalo and against the Rams, and I think the Cardinals are just going to be able to ride this wave that they've got, and um, I think surprise a lot of people. All right, to all the Cardinals fans, congrats on that game. But at the same time, I know Diop is very skilled. And I hate to put it this way, but you guys were lucky that game. Wow. Lucky. You were lucky to witness that. You were lucky he caught that. Okay? There's three men on him, two of the best defenders. I know I'm contradicting myself. I know everybody's going to probably attack me for this. I don't care. <laughs> Diop is a number one receiver. Yes, that is 100% true. Did he get lucky also? Um, yes. Yes, he did. It's called a Hail Mary for a reason. You throw the ball, you, you throw the ball deep into the end zone and pray 
you ch- you pray a hail mary that someone catches it. Guys, that's all the time that we have for today. Thank you guys for watching. Once again, our regards go out to Evan's friend. And if you guys liked, please like, subscribe, and share with your friends and turn on post notifications. And thank you.